Congratulations to both teams on reaching the final round of the Big 2016 NFL. Call this house to order. Invite the Honorable Prime Minister to give the first speech of the round. Want to exceed seven minutes, 30 seconds. So we decided our motion today will be this house will provide free government heroin to all heroin addicts. Uh, our model is going to be that this heroin is going to be provided at government-run rehab facilities and it's going to be administered by medical professionals. Um, it's going to provide access to resources designed to help addicts quit, and each client is going to be assessed thoroughly beforehand to make sure that we're not having new users obtain heroin. They're going to have a, bunch of, um, a way of determining what, how many times they've quit, how long they've been addicted, and just the likelihood that they'll be quitting in the future. So we're going to have these people who do not really have a strong chance of quitting in the near future. <laughs> So it's going to be provided at rehab facilities. It's going to be administered by medical professionals. They're going to give them access to um, resources that they would um, like to help them quit. And also, um, they're all going to be assessed beforehand to make sure that we don't have people who are not addicted to heroin yet, um, to make sure that we have people who have tried to quit in the past and won't, don't seem to be uh, able to quit in the future. Okay, so I don't know that much about heroin, but how, so you're going to give it to them free to wean them off. Um, if they choose to quit, we will wean them off the drug um, in order to get them to quit, but that's not necessarily what they're doing. We're providing it to them so they can get it at the rehab facility. And is this in the U.S., I presume? Yeah, or we're still in the global market. We're, we're putting it in the U.S., but it's more of a normative debate than a um, debate about policy. Wait, what do you mean a normative debate, not one about policy? Because you just read me a policy. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so this is going to be a case about whether or not it would be good for the government to do this. We're not really looking to have a debate about whether or not um, the U.S. has a political will. That's okay, so you're fiating this act. But, we're fiat. But you're normatively, you're looking at normative prescriptions that are good for the world, I presume. Good for society. Good for the U.S. Good for the U.S. U.S. society, not the world. Oh, well, all for the world, sure. <laughs> 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 while, we, while we internalize that, just to make clear what time it will be like, at uh, one minute, at uh, six minutes or seven minutes, depending on the speech, you'll get a single clap. At uh, eight minutes, you'll get a double clap. And when you hit 8.30 or 7.30, you'll get the rap air horn. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
how do users usually come about here in, like, in your world? Or how do people get into the channel? Yeah. Uh, the same but in your world, world, not in status quo, in your world. Oh, would you mean like throughout the years? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be covered in the course. Okay, great. Um, any other questions? So what about prison reform? Oh, uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Organized crime, 
that make money off of profiting and selling drugs. It also has stigmatized drug use and criminalized, criminalized communities of color. And we think that when we implement this policy, which treats addiction like an illness that must be treated as opposed to a character flaw that must be punished, what we're having is a mental shift that sets a precedent for other healing policies that will um, solve all these problems that we have in our nation. So first issue, uh, the way that heroin economics works right now. So heroin is provided by groups like mafia, organized crime groups, gangs, and also narco-terrorism groups like the Taliban. What this is doing is it's going to deprive them of their resources from selling heroin in the long term, because obviously everyone's going to go and buy heroin from the government if they can, because it's free, as opposed to buying it off the street. It doesn't matter how much they charge. They can charge five cents, and they still always go to the free government heroin, because it's free, it's not laced, it's pure, so it's going to take away any incentive for them to be selling heroin off the street. So first of all, this is going to take heroin off the streets and reduce the number of addicts who have going into the system in the long term. But secondly, it's also going to um, lessen the incentive to produce and lessen community violence because you won't have things like turf wars, you won't have narco-terrorism being funded, it'll deal, deal a huge blow to that industry. But secondly, we're also going to have things like less incarceration. So we have less people addicted to heroin, we have less people, uh, because there, we have more people getting rehab help, and we also just have um, people who are addicted to heroin not buying it off the street, not contributing to crime, but going to medical facilities. So they're not being... Uh, Criminalized. We also have less people addicted to heroin turning to crime, so that's less people in the criminal justice system. And also, since we're not over policing addiction and we're not focusing on punishing addiction, we have less minority communities disproportionately tar targeted um, in order to um, meet this like war on drugs sort of idea. So, what we're going to have is we're going to have less incarceration rates. And why is this good? This is great because, first of all, it keeps families together and groups incarcerated. It's obviously very negative on communities, especially in these minority communities that are over policed under policies like the current one we have now regarding heroin addiction. But it's also good because it allows for greater use of government resources. People, um, the Gups uh, obviously might argue for you today that this is going to be a waste of government resources, but we actually, waste of government, waste of government resources, but we actually get amazing resources saved on our side because we're not paying for people to be incarcerated. We're not paying for emergency ser services um, to come and take people when they overdose. We're not paying for expensive overdose medicine. We're not paying for the emergency services provided in the emergency room, putting a strain on that system. We're not paying for social services that are helping heroin addicts because we're already helping them there, so we're not having this huge strain of our um, our entire society's welfare um, system. So for those reasons, first of all, our society is going to benefit from that, and we're also going to um, treat addiction as an illness. So like I said before, it sets a precedent for treating addiction as an illness, and when the public sees heroin as a disease for which you must go to the doctors for regular treatment, sort of like kidney dialysis, they're more likely to be sympathetic to users and see them as ill. So the resources that we get, the information that we get, um, from collecting data, data on heroin users can now be put to use and will create more political will for them to use this research to help heroin users to fix drug dealing, and to fix drug addiction and treat it as an illness. This also reduces the stigma towards drug use, which makes users even more likely to seek out treatment and resources for quitting without shame and without having to hide and without locking addiction into a dark room somewhere and leaving these people to die and suffer. And for these reasons, we are so proud to have this. Proposition. Call upon the member of government. Here, here. Here. Thank you. 
sort of pass down a whole bunch of their points in this on the off case here, where they say that uh, how basically society is going to fall apart because everyone's going to become heroin addicts. I think I've barely sufficiently proven in the first point uh, that we're not going to be psychologically assessing people beforehand so we don't get new addicts coming in, and secondly, how the very nature of heroin addiction itself prevents people from taking on the drug in the first place. So you're not going to get a society of people who are high all the time. Instead, you're going to get a society where heroin addicts are actually treated like patients and given the resources they need to fix themselves and to survive within society. Um, furthermore, the second point was about how um, you get higher rates of uh, addiction and heroin use on an international level. Firstly, again, they misunderstood the model. This model is set in the United States. The United States doesn't really care as much about the international systems as it does about its own thing. Inherently, if we can prove that the United States is benefiting from this, then we win that whole point altogether. But also, I think they are on there. Don't understand them. I think they don't understand how this is going to affect these terrorist organizations internationally, how they'll be getting less power from a, a, a massive market like the US, and therefore they're going to be having less revenue with which to fund the terrorist acts that they're committing. Furthermore, we think this is going to highly devalue their position because they're having less resources, it's going to, they're going to be seen as less powerful in these communities, and therefore we are going to be having them getting less power altogether. And then they talked a lot about how like, the US will be invading all these countries, the US is going to go take over Afghanistan, but there are numerous uh, governments throughout the world that produce heroin legally. For example, like the United Kingdom, like Belgium, all these other places where you can legally get heroin, and you can get it from a safe and uh, uh, monitored source that doesn't have like, shit in it that's going to kill people. And then their, final, uh, their third point was how the minorities are hurt especially. Well, I think they fundamentally misunderstood what happens in the status quo, where again, minorities are already hurt. They're not helping minorities on their side of the house. Um, what you see in the status quo is you see minorities having no opportunity to fix themselves. They're forced, if, they have a low, if they're a lower socioeconomic class, they're often forced to pay for their addiction through going to crime, through going to prostitution, through trafficking the drugs themselves. No, nope. and therefore you'll see more minority communities being forced into prison or simply dying on the streets because they can't afford to pay for a home at night or pay for food. So what you see on our side of the house is at least you're giving them the opportunities to buy safe drugs and uh, to get safe drugs illegally, um, which you don't get on their side of the house. And their, third, uh, their fourth point is about consent politics, how people <coughs> never consent to addiction. And I think that really goes to our side of the house as well, because you're recognizing these people didn't consent to their addiction, you're recognizing that they have a medical problem, and you're recognizing that the government is obligated to help them and to stop them from dying on the streets that you get on their side of the house. I think we ultimately agree that we need to help our addicts, but we fundamentally need to change our perspective on the way heroin addiction works, and we need to provide these people with the resources they need to fix themselves. Well, I think they really like half-heartedly kind of tossed out a counter case at the beginning of it, here, talking about how people have to quit, they're still going to be giving resources to people uh, on the basis of them having to quit, and that goes against the very policy altogether, because people won't go into these programs. You'll get people who uh, uh, become dependent on the drugs, they see this heroin as defining who they are and defining who uh, they're themselves. Furthermore, because so many people die because of withdrawal symptoms, people will uh, not want to quit heroin, so they're still going to just be staying on the streets because they think that they'll die if the heroin forces them to take this drug away. So you're not going to get anyone going to these programs, which is still means that you get crime on the streets, you still get these people more likely to go into mass incarceration, and you get these people less likely to quit heroin altogether, and more likely to just die on the streets or become homeless uh, and forced into crime. Now on to our uh, on case, which they didn't really respond to. But the whole yeah. heroin epidemic, the whole heroin epidemic, they talked about how they need to force people to quit. And I think I've sufficiently warranted how you cannot force people to quit in the system. We are not just looking at heroin addicts themselves, we are also looking at the vast societal benefits you get from, uh, forcing, uh, from allowing people to get heroin for free. If they just force people to quit, then they ignore all the other societal repercussions you get from this. They ignore the lower crime rates, they ignore the less, uh, less revenue for uh, for gas. <coughs> drug cartels for narco-terrorist organizations. And they also ignore the effects that this has on people themselves because the more, uh, they won't go into these uh, programs and they won't uh, have the ability to fix themselves. Um, and I think as well, they just talked a lot about how everyone's going to be addicts. Again, that uh, is fundamentally against human nature. People are not going to become heroin addicts because it's not, uh, it's not beneficial for them. Um, they talk extensively about how governments won't be able to like fund 
themselves because everyone's heroin addicts. And I think our model sufficiently proves that people who are new addicts won't be going in and all of those things. And they also talked about taxes here, how we need to prove that the tax system won't fall apart because of this. I think we've already talked about how the tax system won't fall apart because not everyone's going to be heroin addicts. And furthermore, they've, uh, they've kind of skated across all the costs that heroin addiction has for society. We have police costs. You have the incarceration costs of more people going into incarceration because of heroin trafficking or heroin addiction. You have welfare costs. Well, uh, heroin addicts uh, are more likely to be, welfare, uh, to be on welfare. And you also have the societal impacts where they're a burden on the economy rather than a benefit. So we really think what happens on our side of the house isn't that you're getting more costs on the government because of them buying heroin. You're getting less costs because you're having fewer people in governmental institutions and feeding off the government's side. I think also we need to talk about here that nobody's really mentioned is how fundamentally on our side we get fewer people dying on the streets. We get more representation for heroin addicts because they're seen as a less stigmatized position in society. What they get on their side is forcing people to quit. They won't get people even quitting in the first place, and they won't get people seeking help. On our side of the house, at least we treat addiction like an illness. We treat uh, heroin addicts as human beings, and we fix the problem of heroin addiction. Um, so yeah, we would also like to point out the issues of um, like uh, medical production. With many people, uh, this is going to increase the relationship between doctors and heroin addicts. Because in the status quo, you have many heroin addicts coming into doctors, lying about their symptoms in order to get more drugs. So on our side of the house, at least we're providing them with a safe place in which they can go. And I mean, I really don't know if they have any ground to stand on here. Their whole counter case is built upon the conception that they're going to get people, more people quitting. I think we've sufficiently proven on our side how they don't get more people quitting because they don't get people coming into the clinics in the first place because they see heroin, uh, heroin as the thing that defines their, themselves. So what we do on our side is we get less people dying on the streets, we get less uh, illnesses spread by bloodborne diseases, we get less crime, we get less revenue funded towards criminal organizations, we get um, like more stuff for the government in general, we get heroin addicts treated like people and not let to die on the streets. So I really think that they have no benefits. We get all the benefits on our side, or they get none, because they ultimately stigmatize addiction and don't let people die. <laughs> <laughs> what our counter case is because I think when a member of Duff comes up here she fundamentally like does not understand what we counter case so in our world we are saying that we still have these clinics but we don't give these heroin the, uh, addicts the option to just stay on at heroin their entire lives no we say that these clinics should be focused on weaning these people off the heroin we think that this will fundamentally prove to a better society I'll show you why because I don't think they really deal with that because they just have a wrong idea of what we were talking about so first basically Sam comes up here and gives you this great point about the, how the higher rates of need basically how we're going to affect the uh, international market and our own economic market too. So we don't really get a, like, a lot of description out of this. We also don't really get a lot of warrant as to why if we're not legalizing heroin, we can suddenly legally acquire it from other countries. Like, where is this heroin coming from? Because if it's still illegal in the country, how are we going to illegally acquire it from anywhere? So that just doesn't make sense. But also, we tell you that insofar as heroin as a drug prevents people from being really able to associate uh, work in society, we say that on their side of the house, where people can get access to heroin for longer and stay on it for longer, we get less productive citizens. This hurts the U.S. economy because this means that the jobs that these heroin people would have, be able to do if they were not hooked on heroin, they cannot no longer do because they have an access to heroin for their entire lives. So we say that we get a more productive um, economy, more people in the economy, and better workers overall. So then we have um, our second point that we tell you is basically... But we talk about how this hurts minorities. So basically, um, the member of government comes in here and tells you that um, minorities in the status quo they can't fix themselves, and that basically, like in the status quo, things suck for minorities. Yeah, we agree. Fun fact: we're not defending the status quo. Great. So like, what we're talking about, what we want to do is we want to give minorities the ability to not be dependent on the government for their entire lives. We don't want to let them sit and be heroin addicts so they can like basically fall down in society. Sam comes up here 
already gives you a great point about why it is so important that we do not allow minorities to stay economic, or like dependent on the government and all these institutions and become these um, second class citizens who cannot really function because they're heroin addicts. So we tell you that on our Senate House, where we are weaning these people off, we are pushing them to become more productive citizens. These minorities are being benefited because they're not falling behind because they're too busy focusing on getting more heroin. Instead, they can be weaned off of it, become better citizens, and actually go out into the society. So therefore, we create a better world for minorities than they do, where minorities basically can stay on their um, uh, stay on the heroin. And the reason why we want to just deal with this whole idea of why they keep saying that people will not come to our clinics, and um, we talked. Uh, Sam gives you a really great analysis of consent policies. So he says, says uh, sorry, um, the member of government comes up here and says that basically. What they, they're only there to house, they're changing how addiction is, people won't go into our programs. But we would tell you that fundamentally, like, think of the incentive structure. So yes, in our, um, our clinics are going to be winning them off in the future, but at, the, like, at its very basis, we are still offering people free heroin. We're just telling you that we're going to give you an option for the future for you to do better things. See, when they like, try to come up here and give you this idea that people won't come, we tell you that the mind of an addict is focused on that next fix. So insofar as that our <coughs> clinics are still providing a way to get to that next fix, just in a way that we slowly wean it down, then they won't even realize that, that, that this is like we're getting a fundamentally better type of clinic on our side of the house. And as we, they tell you, all the incentives that they say bring the heroin addicts to um, their side of the house also apply to ours, but more so we are creating better things for them in the future. We think that this is incredibly important and incredibly like damning for their side because it does not make sense. So I'd like to go on to their on case because I just really want to prove to you why their version of these clinics cannot exist. So their first point up, they came up here and they tried to give you this idea that governments are obligated to you know, do these things for their citizens. So I'd like to state this first and foremost, and this is kind of a, like overused, but also just true, that governments are obligated to help their citizens be the best citizens they can be and give them the best opportunity, not only for their like present, but also for their future. So insofar as on their side of the house, their citizens are still going to be stuck on heroin. We say that on our side of the house, the government is actually providing a better way for these citizens to be citizens in the future. They're just thinking about the now. We think that we actually provide the proper benefits for them to get off heroin and to become productive members of society. They get none of this on their side of the house because people basically are choosing to stay on heroin. They can't get off of it because these, these things are just letting them stay on it. They say that this is great because we get research. We say that we get actual citizens who can work in society. So this is much more important on our side of the house. So then... They basically talk about the idea that um, this is good for heroin addicts. Uh, they, we told you, uh, they tell you that people will die in the streets and such. We tell you that once again, just cross the pile this thing about how we're not defending the status quo. We say that we're getting, we're still getting the same amount of people there. That uh, that we still get these people into safe environments where they can be um, talked to by medical professionals. All these things still flow for our side of the house, and more so, as I told you, it's more important that you choose our side. But also, I'd like to deal this idea with this idea that they tell you that they're getting this exclusive type of data on their side of the house. Well, we tell you that why not? Why should we get this data at the risk of allowing these people to stay addicted for longer? Why is it so important that we risk these people's lives and like basically let them go on being addicted just to get this data? And they try to give you this analogy that that heroin addiction is like a disease. So I'd like to offer you the like question. Why, if it's like a disease, would we prolong this thing? Why would we not stop it if we can? If we have the power to wean them off of it slowly and allow them to become better citizens, why would we let them stay on this? They really can't deal with this on their side of the house because they don't actually tell you why suddenly people are going to decide to come off of heroin. They really need to impact that better and warrant why suddenly all these addicts are going to stay, um, decide to not be um, on heroin. So then, basically, we tell you, they tell you about the whole war on drugs and the stigmatization of drug use. So, and uh, we... Sam came up here and gave you this great idea about why fundamental freedom outweighs um, the incarceration rate. So they try to give you this idea that on our side of the house, these heroin addicts are still going to be stigmatized. I would say that this is incredibly false in, in considering that on our side of the house, these heroin addicts are treated like they have like sicknesses, they are made healthy, and then they're brought back into society where they can be productive members. While on their side of the house, the, these heroin um, addicts stay on heroin and they basically have to stay on it and they will just always be stigmatized because they can never actually be part of society. I'll give you this. Don't you think you're underestimating how integral many addicts see their addiction to their own lives and they also fear their lives without their drugs? They won't be willing to quit and therefore won't be willing to go into your clinics in the first place. Right, so like, let's talk about what exactly what these people, where they're coming from. So we're telling you that on your side of the house, or both sides of the house, these, might, they, these people who don't know a lot about heroin, they don't have like this access to this information, right? 
They don't know what, like, they, they don't know the hearts around, they don't know the addictions, and as Sam told you, he told you how they don't really consent in this whole idea of addiction. So we tell you, and I also cross apply my, what I said about incentives. So in so far as they are still getting free heroin at first, and they're just told, like, I mean, how nice is it sound to be told that you can still get heroin for a little while, but we're also going to help you, and we still can give you therapy so you can become a better citizen. So we see on our side of the house that this is very important, and we get it much better. So back into what I was talking about about um, stigmatization of uh, minorities, sorry. So, uh, on our side of the house, I tell you that we are getting, um, as I said before, we're basically allowing people to no longer be dependent on their government. So why is this such an important point? Because they really don't, like this is very exclusive to our side, that we don't have people who are constantly dependent on these governments. So, insofar as the stigmatization of drug addicts comes from the fact that they are constantly tearing, like being uh, these people who are so dependent on government, so dependent on welfare, and so unable to contribute to society in any sense. We say that on their side of the house where these addicts can stay addicted and can stay in a sense that they will always be need, like needed to be cared for and needed to be provided for, they get greater stigmatization because they can never be their own individuals. While on our side of the house, we wean these people off so they can become individuals. And therefore, these people won't experience the type of stigmatization stigmatization because they're no longer viewed as these burdens or as these people that will constantly have to be um, taken care of. And for all these reasons, we believe that you have to look at the different uh, cases we're giving you. On our side of the house, we have a world in which people can get the help they need, but also be, get, be free from these addictions. While on their side of the house, they allow people to just stay addicted for their entire lives. We think this is incredibly harmful, and for all these reasons, proud to embrace. <laughs> No, like, do it. I'm starting to realize that I misspelled apartheid uh, during the long short of the VP round where I was trying to communicate across the. What were you trying to say about that? Oh no. Oh no, that wasn't that one. That one was really bad. Oh. <laughs> so I'm I don't know. The the Wikipedia page on heroin is giving me remarkably little fodder for jokes. So <laughs> I apologize if this isn't the funniest floor speech in the world. Also this round has gotten a little dark, so I'm not sure how all these things are gonna go over. Like we're talking about people dying on the street. <laughs> For top of my thing, I have drugs slash train spotting, maybe. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but, um, oh, also, I was going to wear a scarf in honor of MDG, but I realized that I'm an American, so I can't pull off a scarf. <laughs> Speaking of that, I'm really surprised that Abby was talking about Americans being fairly rational. Especially as someone not from America, you should be a better place than most of us to recognize. <laughs> Also, you know, again, like, I am sorry about how dark this got, because when Sam first mentioned it, I thought a world where everyone was just high all the time actually sounded kind of <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we're really, we're almost through all of the jokes. <laughs> I was going to say something about how dramatic Sam was when he took off his jacket. I really like that. Also, how the real winner in this round is New Zealand. <laughs> much, much like Cambridge, our team has been infiltrated by people from Oceania. <laughs> also, also, there's a lot of people saying less when they should be saying fewer. That's not, <laughs> that's not even a joke. That's just something I feel like. The impacts of different policies. Um, so I guess, like, what, what have we heard so far? I'm really kind of disappointed this is a counter case because now just both sides are in favor of free heroin. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be able to make more distinctions, but thanks, guys. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have any, I guess, like, I can maybe talk about, like, Andres' weird Ted Cruz thing. So I'm like, yeah, like, like that. Dan, do you have a suggestion? I like that we uh, were going to invade Afghanistan over the heroin problem. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I, I am not a heroin addict, and I would absolutely consider that in my interest. I would vote for someone who ran on that policy. So, you know, I don't, oh, actually, I shouldn't let that affect the uh, adjudication, although I think... Maybe I'm an average voter, but definitely not a reasonable average voter. <laughs> so, Republican you know, take candidates. that as you will. What? Republican candidates positions? Oh, I mean, I'm obviously voting for Ted Cruz. With <laughs> so it's not, I think, I mean. What would Ted Cruz say? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
I don't know. Oh, what would Ted Cruz yeah. say about yeah. this policy? Oh, 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 oh boy. I think he'd probably say something about how you can't, like, pollute your body <laughs> or something. I don't know. Maybe that's more Trump. Do you know that he doesn't drink? How ridiculous. How is he dropping this far in life? Obviously, is no correlation. I don't know. I just feel obligated to support AFTA alumni. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what? Did someone just say something? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thanks. So if they don't want to quit, so they're not going to get people coming into these clinics in the first place. So all of the advocacy they have on their side is shot because no one's going to come. On our side of the house, we have trust between the patients and the doctors that they're not getting on their side because they see these doctors as people who are either um, going to wean them off and like secretly wean them off of heroin, or they see them as people whose real main concern is not their personal welfare like we do on our side, where we say, yes, we understand, we will help you get what you need until you can quit on your own choosing on our side of the house where there's more agency for heroin addicts. But on their side of the house, it's sort of being done and they're being treated like children. And also, they're more likely to stay quitting after they decide to quit themselves. We don't think this is really how addiction works. Um, so then they talk about how with this consent politics, but we think, and then they try to tell you that like the impacts don't matter if at the end of the day, um, they're not cons consenting to their future selves. But we think the impacts really matter. Because if we can show you what we have, that on our side of the house, you have less people leaving heroin, you have less people overdosing, you have less people drowning with withdrawal, whereas on their side of the house, you have no one coming to these clinics in the first place, because it's basically just we have and no one wants to quit. On our side, we have stronger incentives, and we have more trust. We think that you're not going to access any of the advocacy on their side. So yeah, great. The heroin house would be really happy that you know you've respected future consent law politics when they're um, you know dead from an overdose. We think that this really isn't actually as important as they make it sound, and they're not even protecting their future selves, because like they said before, they're not if they're not really freeing them from addiction, then they're not protecting their future selves. So unless they can really warn to you why this is effective, which they didn't, we don't think they actually get that on our side of the house. And then they talk about international rights. So where do we get the most international rights? So I think they really fundamentally misunderstand this model here. So they first of all have this idea that heroin addiction is going to spread, and we're going to have this voter block that's going to invade Af Afghanistan. And we're going to get to that in our third point about how it's not going to spread. And then they have this argument that we're going to be like funding the Taliban. We already told you in our NG that there are countries that legally produce heroin. We're going to be buying from these markets, improving these markets. Opiates and things like methadone and whatnot are made in certain countries. We're not buying from the Taliban. This simply is not true. Um, so they're still providing, and also they're still providing free heroin on their side of the house, millions of heroin addicts. So I don't understand why they say that they're like not going to be funding the people that think like narco terrorism groups when we're not. But so as so we, again, so we're doing this legally. This whole thing about the Taliban's biggest market being oh, U.S. is completely untrue. Yeah. The argument that we also buy into narco terrorism. Okay. Well, 
Well, I didn't put it in the chat. Oh, the argument that we also bite in, the tart case bites into tobacco tips and eats into blood. But as we told you in our PM that we're weakening our tariffs, but you're not getting any sort of demand for heroin from the United States populace because there's no incentive to buy heroin when you can get it for free if you're already addicted to heroin, and new people will not be being addicted to heroin because of the strong stigma and because the consumers do not want to be addicted to heroin. Um, can their friends are not adults, so they are influenced by incentives, and you're also not getting this U.S. government as a consumer base because we're not buying from the Taliban. Instead, we're dealing this fatal blow to narco-terrorism because we're not buying from them, and what you get is less terrorism in the world. Terms. So we actually have a lot of international benefits on our side of the house that they don't really get on their side of the house. And then our third one is, where do we get less addicts? So their model and their counter case provides to them for less addicts, but we already told you that they're not going to have people going to their clinics who will not be going to places like rehab facilities in the first place. The people who don't want to quit are not go we're, they're not going to get them on their side. We are. But we're not just going to help people quit through things like rehab and things like weaning off when they say they want to wean off if we think they have better respects or agency. We're also going to have more people quitting because we're cutting down on the supply of heroin in the streets. And we think this is an argument that they really miss on their side of the house. When it is not profitable to sell heroin to United States citizens, the people will not be putting heroin out to the streets, and no one's going to be buying it, and we're not going to have new people being addicted. In fact, what we're going to see is addiction becomes treated like a disease. We're going to see that um, people will not want this because it will be seen as a disease, and we're going to actually have more political will for things like heroin addiction to be um, demolished. We established this all in our PM, and they ignore it, and come up with this idea that we're going to have an entire country that's incentivized and heroin cannot collapse, and that everyone's going to be addicted to heroin. We think that this, first of all, doesn't make any sense, and secondly, um, we already told you why we're not going to have more, addic not more addicts and how we're actually going to have less addicts on the side of the house than they could ever get on their side of the house. So for these reasons, we are very proud to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I can invite you to cross the aisle, shake hands. No. Yeah, you can go back to Julia. Everybody else go back to Julia. Everybody yeah, are we just going to like all yell at each other for uh, 30 minutes? I don't forgot to.